This is going to be a look at some film of Devin DuVernay and Rashad Bateman from their week, Ravens Week 3 loss against the Bills. But also, to be honest with you, it'll be a little bit of a commentary about the state of the Ravens' pass game with Rashad Bateman, which, of course, we know you know will suffer this week by not having him active. I know the Ravens have tried to replace him in terms of bringing in a you know, an NFL caliber receiver and Andy Isabella, but I just don't think you can replace Rashad Bateman's explosiveness, his ability to catch the ball at six, eight, ten yards and make someone miss and get get another first down, essentially get two first downs in one play. In my opinion, those plays are missing from this offense right now, and some of that I think is self-inflicted wounds by the Ravens coaching staff, talking about the conservative play calls in the third quarter against the Dolphins, the conservative play calls even in the second and third quarter against the Bills, both of which were home losses where we, quote, blue leads. So the way this is going to work in terms of uh, the film, I'm going to show you film of DuVernay and Bateman kind of in a row against the Bills. There's one play I can't show you because Baldy used it in one of his breakdowns. But before we start, let's uh, kind of recap where we are in terms of the past game. I mean, Lamar's numbers look good, 11 touchdowns, four interceptions, 65% completion percentage. So if you ask me, he's right in line with his production level in terms of completion percentage. Obviously, the Bills game is an outlier. I think only average like five yards per attempt, something like that. You know, it was raining, and he's had trouble in bad weather games, so that's not surprising. And the Bills have a high level of defense. I mean, let's be honest. They're very disciplined. They know how to play football, keep things in front, and not give up big plays. <clears throat> only taking eight sacks on the year. So I don't really have anything bad to say about Lamar. There's no reason to. <laughs> a, he's my favorite player. B, he's playing great other than a game against the Bills. You know, where I already established there's various factors that contribute to that. My problem is that Mark Andrews has 36 targets, and Rashad Bateman and Devin DuVernay between them have 35, if I did my math right. So in Andrews' 36 targets, he's got 24 catches. In Bateman and DuVernay's 35 targets, they've got 23 catches. I mean, quite consistent, if you ask me. The problem is, is that it takes a Bateman's off to a slow start. There's no doubt about that. I even hesitated like to make this title. I asked a couple of people in my Discord and Patreon, like, is this title too inflammatory? It's a little tongue in cheek, like a lot of my titles lately, to try to get you in here and make you think it's going to be something controversial when really it's not. So you know, Bateman's off to a poor start. Eleven catches, twenty-two targets, fifty percent catch rate. That's very low for him and someone of his talent level, no doubt. But he's averaging twenty-two yards per catch. Clearly, he did not play well against the Bills. Multiple drops or times where him and Lamar just aren't on the same page. Still, if you ask me, you know, is one of the guys that this team, this offense needs to get the ball to because of his ability to get two first downs in one play. And we would always say that as a defensive staff. Like, we don't ever want to give up two first downs in one play. If, if people are going to get a first down on us, we want them to get eight yards on third and six. Or we want them to get four yards on third and two. Something like that. We didn't ever want to give up 21 yards on second and seven. Hopefully that makes sense. You know, 10 plus 10 is 20. So anything larger than a 20-yard gain is two first downs in one play. That was just a conceptual way that we would try to get our kids to understand, hey, we're trying not to give up big plays here. All right. As we get into the film, you know, I'll kind of refer to some of those numbers. Forgive the long lead in. This is going to be a play where I believe um, Lamar gets the ball to Ricard late off of a chip up to the top side, and it's just another example, if you ask me, of this route being open and available to us, and the ball's got to be out quicker. I understand that we're looking for things to develop to Mark Andrews. In my opinion, these things will develop more if we start to attack here, and I mean getting this ball out sooner. Yes, you have a defender who appears to be in the curl area that could make the tackle, but that's because we're waiting too long to throw the football in the first place, if you ask me. I think this route has been available in this in this scheme for the better part of a year, to be honest with you. And I'm not sure why. Well, I think the reason why we're not hitting it is because we're we're waiting to see what develops here because we're being told at, from coaches this is the primary part of the read. And I understand that it is, but at some point there needs to be an emphasis. Let's get the ball to the guy, excuse me, the number two guy in this offense in terms of who can get big chunk plays. Maybe DuVernay is the number two guy for you. That's no problem. Clearly, Lamar is the number one in terms of a guy who can turn what should be or could be a four-yard gain into a 40-yard gain or even a 20-yard gain. And, and that's a bad snap by Tyler Linderbaum. I thought I saw two of those in the game, by the way. He looked like he was affected by the weather or something, to be honest with you. I just feel like this ball should be come out now. Now, you do have a defensive lineman in the, in the path, no doubt. So I understand if you want to say, Coach, he can't throw this ball to this guy that soon. 
I'm just talking about a general observation. There are times when that route is available underneath. And in my opinion, we should be trying to encourage Lamar, let other people be playmakers. And I think that guy right there is one. Of course, his play on Sunday against the Bills doesn't reflect that. So I understand that. As it is a great play by Lamar to get the ball out to Ricard. So having said that, as my lead in, let's talk about DuVernay. This is, uh, I have it labeled in our database as a, a backwards RPO. It's really not. I don't think Lamar is reading um, anything for real in terms of whether to give the ball or throw it. I think it's just a play action, but I might be wrong. You know, certainly as there's a mesh here, maybe he's reading these guys coming downhill. Uh, maybe somehow he sees Tehran Johnson out of the corner of his eye. I think Lamar's got great vision, so that wouldn't surprise me. From the end zone angle, you'll see it just doesn't look like he would be capable of seeing that Tehran Johnson is blitzing off that edge. I think it's a predetermined blitz by the uh, by the Bills where they just got a little overly aggressive and we punished them 13-yard gain. You see Lamar's helmet. I don't know how this works for you guys when I slow the film down, so let me know if it, it's not smooth. On my screen, on my source laptop, it looks smooth, but I never know how it's going to turn out on the uh, streaming laptop. I'm just not sure he sees anything here in terms of the linebacker level to make him pull this. I feel like this is a, a predetermined play-action play, and I love it. This is one of my favorite formations Twin slot. I did a whole um, whole video on twin slot. Not many people watched it, but I think it is our. I think it is one of our most dangerous formations. Whether or not Ricard is on the field, generally when he's in the slot there, he's just going to stay in and pass pro, right? Although on the first play I showed you, he, he passed pros and then he slipped out and Lamar was able to catch him or hit him with that shovel pass. In my opinion, this is probably our most dangerous formation when we have someone other than Ricard here. I think it's still dangerous when Ricard is there, but if we have Andrews there or likely, of course it takes away some of the run threat. That's the problem with us right now is that Ricard is generally a run blocker who has minimal effect in the pass game, and then likely, and to a lesser extent, Andrews are pass-receiving tight ends who have generally you know, less impact in the run game. Hope to, hopefully I said that in a way that makes sense. I can only show this play from the all-22 angle. There's just something about, well, there's something about Lamar Jackson. There's many things about Lamar Jackson that are amazing, but there's just something about Devin DuVernay to me. He's, he's the guy who's always in the right place or often in the right place. And I just think that's a, a rare skill, a rare trait. One of our coaches used to say, hustle is unpredictable. And A, we have a guy here who never gives up on plays and who trusts Mark Andrews a lot. I can't wait for the day when we have one or two receivers that he trusts as much as he trusts Mark Andrews. I'm not saying that he should trust them more at this moment right now. I feel like Devin DuVernay is developing that, though. Look, Devin DuVernay has 12 catches this year on 13 targets, if I did my math right. Hey, that's a high percentage, right? Well, I don't know. How does this stack up? Like, he, was, he wasn't the targeted guy here, and he still gets a catch. So when those rating services that calculate those things 12 catches on 13 targets are they including this as a target because clearly it was not uh, one of our coaches used to say hustle is unpredictable that's where Devin DuVernay comes from you can get this kind of route from Mark Andrews that's not exactly the route and then DuVernay is going to run across the screen there's actually a little more separation in the routes than that right there I only have so much screen to work with here's Duve as Lamar is escaping. Hustle is unpredictable. What does that mean? It means keep playing football. Keep going. Act as if there's two whistles. You know, some of you guys that are that are coaches in here, you'll understand this. In practice, we used to use a double whistle period, you know, for, for one side of the ball or another, whereby the first whistle means keep playing. And you go until the, you run toward the football until the second whistle. Now, that doesn't mean that you keep tackling, you keep blocking. What it means is the defensive guys – Keep running to the football even after the first whistle. Trying to develop that mentality of keep hustling no matter what. And Devin DuVernay looks like he's got it. Again, forgive me if that if this slow motion portion of it is is uneven or choppy for you guys. I certainly don't want a, a poor video quality. All right, third and 18. This is after. I think this is after the uh, poor pass. No, this is not. This is after a sack on second down. And we get a double slant to DuVernay. Now, one of the things that the Bills were doing was, you know, they were heavily accounting for this over route by Mark Andrews. And this is one of those things where I'm not sure why the Ravens don't do this more. If you line up in 11 personnel, so now you've got, I believe, Prochet here. you got Bateman here. 
Andrews, and then Duve. You got to get Ricard off the field to do this, guys. Okay, and that's to the point that a lot of you have made. Like we got to see Ricard a little bit less. When you run this with Andrews, whether it's a slant, you know, whether it's an over, whether you know, whether he sits down in the middle of the field, whatever it is, if the nickel defender is on the other side, this slant should be available to number one if we got a big enough body and a strong guy who can do it. And we do in Devin Duvernay. That's just a throw to try to get the first down. We're not trying to hit him. Oh, excuse me, to try to get us in field goal range. We're not trying to hit him to allow him to get the first down. You see the attention that Andrews draws from Milano. And in my opinion, you know, getting Ricard off the – I'm a fan of Patrick Ricard. I like Patrick, Patrick Ricard. I'm glad for the career that he's had. I hope he, you know, creates generational wealth for him and his family and, and you know, descendants. But at times we've got to get him off the field. If it's Prochet, Andy Isabella, uh, Demarcus Robinson, whoever it is, I feel like we got to get those guys on the field and not just on third and 18 like this is. This is third and 18 where it's obvious what we're doing in terms of run pass. In my opinion, we got to do this on first and 10 some. Give our guys a chance to make a play. Duvernay can make plays. Andrews can obviously make plays. Plays Use his gravity to get other guys open. I still think Prochet can make plays for this team. Are there going to be big plays downfield? You know, probably not. All right, I kind of ranted there. Forgive me for that. Now we're going to get on to some Bateman film. And look, he did not have a great game. This is a this is not a fun video for me to make, for real. That's why I delayed it until Friday. Um, I think there's a lot going on here. They're playing cover three, they being the Bills. This is a drop by Bateman. It's just a drop. Whether the ball is thrown on his front, you know, the direction he was going or not, it's a drop. Like, he's got a high standard for himself, he, he being Bateman. He thinks he should catch this ball, and he should. So this is an example of us throwing that route that I ran, I talked about earlier and, and Bateman dropping it. So you can understand from Lamar's perspective why at times he may not trust our guys. Now, having said all that, this is a predictable route, guys. Look at this tight split by Bateman. Look how close he is to the left tackle. That's only so that he can run that route there. We need to be a little less predictable at times and have him run an out cut from that alignment. You know, in my opinion, that ball's thrown on the, on the wrong shoulder, on the wrong hip. Other people disagree with me. It's no problem. I mean, that's not the point that I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is Rashad Bateman's got to catch the football. And I think he's pissed off with himself. I think he's frustrated right now, for real. He's frustrated that he's only got 11 catches. He's frustrated that other receivers that are, um, you know, not nearly as talented as him, you know, aren't making, aren't get, are getting more uh, targets, making more plays, and maybe getting more shine. This is the third and seven. This is what Shaw Sha Bateman can do. And I love that we've got him in the slot. Like, what's wrong with moving our really talented guy into the slot? Let him work, you know, on somebody who's a matchup, like that safety there for the Bills. So, I mean, he's not a bad player. He's a good player. The Bills play great, so give, the, give them credit. But that's a bad matchup for them. That's a good matchup in our favor, in my opinion. Same play, end zone angle. You can see Bateman down here. And, you know, we're not going to have him for the Bengals game. But we will have him for a long time beyond, uh, beyond you know, just this week. And I think that right there is Rashad Bateman. I don't think Rashad Bateman is the guy who dropped that previous play I showed you. I don't think Rashad Bateman is the guy who uh, was upset on a big catch by Mark Andrews uh, the week before against the Patriots. I kind of did talk about it a little bit. Me personally, this is Rashad Bateman right here. Tough catch. Good coverage, great throw by Lamar, great hands, secure the football, boom. To me, that's Rashad Bateman. That's what we got. Got a little dick move by these guys here, but that's football. You know what I mean? Trying to punch the ball out, you know, before the guy might be down. And you can understand why Bateman jumps in the guy's face. All right, Bateman down here at the bottom of the screen. And this ball, I, you know, whether he should catch it or not, or whether it's a, a great throw or not, I'm not sure. In my opinion, Bateman wants to catch this football. Now, I think he needs to settle his feet a little sooner in order to be able to expand his catch radius. If your feet aren't settled, your catch radius, you know, is kind of limited to a ball that's thrown, you know, on this side of you, continuing more towards the middle of the field. You'll get the end zone angle here in a minute. This is a situation where Lamar trusted him. His first and 15, I think it was after a false start on Linderbaum, which was kind of crazy that we had two of those, including one that very easily could have been a fumble, right, the first play of the third quarter. This is one where Lamar trusts him, and we're using that under route 
to open a lane between these two inside linebackers for like that deep dig, deep in. And and I'm not one of those who's like thinks that every throw needs to be on the correct side. Like even the one that he dropped a couple of plays ago, I showed you. You know, that that's that happens sometimes. Ball's wet. Sometimes there's a defensive lineman in the way. And that's one thing that a lot of us analysts, like we don't pay attention to sometimes. We'll miss that, is that sometimes there'll be a defensive lineman in the way. And so he's got to kind of fit that ball on one side or the other just to get it out there. This one, you know, Rashad Bateman wants to catch that ball. I still think his feet <clears throat> need to be settled. But look, it's a wet field. It's a wet day. It wasn't easy to get your feet set. Uh, so, you know, that's one of the things about football that when we watch it on TV – Versus being there in person, you kind of get a little bit more of a feel of the conditions on the field. I think on a dry field, Rashad Bateman catches that football. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. He's down here at the bottom side of the screen. This is that weird, you know, completion late to him. Uh, he's left alone, you know, to be honest with you, with this corner. Now, this corner is pointing someone else to cover him. And in my opinion, you know, Bateman wants to keep running. But we're doing a lot of this stuff where – where we read zone and we kind of sit, or we read man and we keep running, versus this is like an extended, uh, extending the play. At some point, these guys are going to lock up man. You know, somebody's going to lock up man. And in my opinion, he just needs to keep running, make himself available to the football. But Lamar is super aware. He understands and remembers the route that he had backside. It's unfortunate that we have so much pressure at times. Hopefully, hey, man, Ronnie Stanley comes back, you know, it would be very interesting to see how he deals with Trey Hendrickson. That is the that will be the main matchup that I will talk about in my preview on Saturday morning. If we can, we said this in our Discord. If we can protect this man right here and give him time, we will win a Super Bowl. Maybe I don't know if it'll be this year. I don't know if it'll be another year. If we protect Lamar Jackson, I don't care about scheme. I don't care about all those other things. The man is a winner. He's always been a winner. And that's why, like, even on days like this where he struggles throwing the ball, you know, I still trust and believe in him to be able to make plays even against, you know, these high-level defenses like the Bills showed. Bateman up top, a nice catch underneath the coverage. It's a second and 12, I believe, after a two-yard loss on first down. And this is where I'm going to digress a little bit about the offense. It's a second and 12 because we ran on first and 10. Yes, it's a it's – a, a rainy day, it's a wet day. So some people could say, well, coach, we couldn't throw on first and 10 because of the conditions. Well, that's kind of weak if you ask me, just my mentality, especially after this loss. If we're going to end up throwing on second and 12, why not throw on first and 10? What, what would be the difference? You know, we're going to end up with a, a pass play and a run play after two downs anyway, if we have an unsuccessful run play on first down. And then we have a – I mean, this is a four-yard gain or five-yard gain, but let's call it a successful play, pass play for a moment. What would you prefer? I would prefer to throw on first down, possibly get six, eight, nine yards, and then run on second down or go play action on second down. You guys let me know what you think of that thought. You know you know how I feel about how conservative we were um, offensively you know, in the second quarter. I think this is a third-quarter play, to be honest with you. This is kind of to my point that I said earlier about – throwing the ball on certain sides. We don't have a great angle of this, but if, in my opinion, Lamar is dropping down a little bit because he understands he's got a D end on the outside of him and then a D tackle on the inside that Linderbaum is dealing with. And so he's got this lane to throw the ball through. Sometimes you have to drop down to do it. That's where I, I feel like I kind of like side with the judgment of the quarterback in terms of how he tries to deliver the football through that lane. Because not only are you trying to read the coverage downfield, not only are you trying to show good technique in terms of how you throw the ball, you're also trying to navigate whatever you've got going on in here in the pocket that gives you, hopefully, a, a lane to throw the football. That's why so many people you know, love tall quarterbacks. Another great catch, if you ask me, on a day when he had two drops, maybe three, I think Rashad Bateman also had two really nice catches. You can tell from watching this video, I'm a big fan of Rashad Bateman. Uh, watching plays like this was a struggle. You know, it's it a real struggle. As someone who's become more of a player-centered coach in my own life, like coaching people, coaching children um, in football or track and field or whatever it is, you know, it's just uh, protective. And like this, 
first of all, this is an amazing you know, job of juking Tehran Johnson, if you ask me. I don't feel like that's a good job. I feel like that's a great job. You can tell me you know, what you think. Is that, a, is that a 7 out of 10? Is that an 8 out of 10? Is it a 10? I would say it's an eight and a half, nine 9 out of 10. You know, just I have a hard time giving it a better release when we don't catch the football. Is it, you know, is it a foot and a half to two feet further out than Bateman's uh, expecting it? Maybe. I'd like to see him burst through here. Um, I don't know that he hesitates at all, but, man, I just, you know, missed opportunity for him. He's a young man who's in his second year, missed a lot of time last year. He's going to be forged by the fire, if you ask me. He's going to be criticized. He's going to be made fun of. Social media, it's like that old saying, you know, by, uh, I think, Roosevelt. You know, it's the man in the arena, in the arena who counts. And um, I think this is just going to do nothing but make him better. I can't wait till we get to the other, other end of this. It's difficult to see him struggle knowing, knowing the talent level that he has. Let me know what you think of my thoughts of the, the status of the Ravens pass game, the number of targets. Certainly not saying Mark Andrews isn't playing well, but my only, my only caveat or problem with Andrews having so many targets compared to the other guys is this. Andrews is averaging about 11 yards per catch right now. Bateman's averaging 22. Of course, we know that he's got two long touchdown catches, one against the Jets, one against the Dolphins. Maybe they're anomalies. Maybe he won't do those things. I think that's absolutely incorrect, though. Look at the juke that he put on a, a DB for the Patriots and then gained another 17 yards after the juke. Remember, it was on the left sideline. It was like a deep comeback. Catches it, turns, jukes the guy inside, and gains another like 17 yards. Maybe it was 15. That level of explosiveness, that doesn't disappear, unless you're not healthy, you know, clearly. Now, to my point, DuVernay's averaging 14 yards per catch, and five of those are on third down, okay? So it's not like DuVernay's getting play-action passes for him on first down where he's taking advantage of an overly aggressive defense. His catches, a lot of them, are contested third down catches against tough man defense. You can tell me how you feel about that statement there. I think I think DuVernay, if targeted a little earlier sometimes in the series, meaning first, second, or third down, if he's targeted a little earlier in the series, I feel like he could be a 16 or 17 yards per catch guy you know, for stretches of the season, maybe not the whole year. I love his game. I'm glad to see him uh, succeeding, performing well. I can't wait until both of these guys are hitting at the same time and we get that performance and contribution from uh, Andrews. And then my last point about the pass game is uh, we've got three other guys that are being, I don't want to say underutilized, but they're certainly not, you know, producing as much as we would like. We got Demarcus Robinson, Isaiah Likely, and Tylen Wallace. They got 24 targets for 11 catches, about nine or 10 yards per catch. So their, but that's disappointing. I get it, I understand. But that their yards per catch isn't that much lower than Andrews. Of course, they're seeing a different level of attention than Andrews. They're seeing a different type of coverage, clearly. That goes to my point, if you ask me, about DuVernay and Bateman. There is a lot of return on getting the ball to them early in the series, first, second, third down. And we twice this year, we have missed opportunities when we were ahead to keep our foot on the gas pedal and kind of use this young talent that we've got. It's a difficult thing for me to, to um, apply a stock down, which is a corny title anyway. It's a difficult thing for me to apply a stock down you know, assessment to Rashad Bateman after four games in his second year. Because a young man's got a ton of talent and he's clearly motivated, uh, the sim similarly to Devin DuVernay and Lamar and all of our other guys. I trust I trust what we're, our players are able to do when they're completely healthy. The The season is a grind. You know, don't give up on our guys, particularly Rashad Bateman. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the breakdown, um, let me know about it in the comment section. And then please share it on social media.